Hello everyone and welcome to this week's video. Today I'm going to be explaining intake manifolds and performance intake manifolds. Now this intake manifold here is a Skunk 2 uh, intake manifold for Acura Integras uh, courtesy of Redline360.com so I will include a product link in the description that you can go ahead and check out. Um, but basically intake manifolds are a pretty essential part of the engine. Uh, they're basically the last step uh, before the air goes into the engine uh, and goes into the cylinder head. So what we've got going on is looking at an intake manifold. Uh, you've got your air intake, your throttle body, and your intake manifold. So the air goes into the air intake, travels through your throttle body, into your intake manifold, and from there uh, into your uh, engine through the cylinder head. So this is just kind of a top-down look on the intake manifold. So ideally with your intake system, you want all of the components to have the same diameter. So your air intake, your throttle body, and your intake manifold should all match up so that the air can flow very freely uh, throughout. Now, one thing that you can do with the intake manifold is kind of port match it to the throttle body. So you can grind away material here where the air first enters the intake manifold and have that match up to the throttle body so that you have a very smooth transition into the intake manifold. Now, as you can see, there's all kinds of uh, connections all over this intake manifold, as it's, uh, it's got a lot going on, and it's kind of an essential thing that seems very simple, but quite a few things connect to it and use it as a resource. So let's go ahead and look at my engine and talk about these different uh, connections here. So looking in the engine bay, we can start with the air filter, work our way to the throttle body, and then connected to the throttle body, we have the intake manifold. So just for comparative purposes, I've got the Skunk 2 intake manifold, uh, sitting here right beside it. So there's quite a few connections. Uh, you can see that the intake manifold kind of plays an integral role in the engine as far as all kinds of different sensors and things going on. So let's kind of look at them one by one and talk about what we've got. So the first and kind of most obvious connection is the throttle body. So the throttle body is going to mount on the left side of the intake manifold uh, and that would be mounting to like right here on this face right there. Uh, and that, of course, uh, controls the amount of airflow that the engine gets when you open that valve inside of there. Kind of the next most important thing is going to be the fuel rail. Obviously, you need fuel in order for this engine to do anything. So that's going to be this rail right here. And then each of the injectors is going to be right in there. And so you can see the little uh, holes in this intake manifold where each of your injectors uh, are going to be spraying fuel. That's what this little notch right here is out for. That's where the fuel is going to be spraying in. Now behind the intake manifold you can see here kind of connecting between the throttle body and the intake manifold is the idle air control valve or IAC valve. And what this does is when your throttle is closed, when your throttle valve is closed, this can regulate and allow for more air to go inside of the intake manifold and what that does is it allows the ECU to manage the idle uh, rev uh, the rev limits basically um, what RPM you're going to be spinning at when you're just idling and that throttle is closed. So looking at the Skunk 2 manifold you can see the little passageway uh, for the IAC valve and that's where that air is going to bypass uh, in order to go into the engine with the throttle body closed. Now right in front of the plenum you can see the mount here and this is just so you can adjust your throttle cable and uh, keep that taut. So here is where that would be uh, mounted and you can adjust your throttle cable with that. Mounted on top of the intake manifold we have the EVAP purge valve which is basically part of the evaporative emission system and what it does is it allows for uh, evaporated fuel from the gas tank that's uh, expanded in the gas tank to be burned off in the engine. Now mounted on the top of the intake manifold you can see this hose uh, connecting to the valve cover and that's a breather hose and basically what that is is it's part of the uh, positive crankcase ventilation system and it allows for airflow from the intake manifold uh, into the valve cover. It actually does travel in this direction. Another one of our many sensors in here, this sensor right here, this is the IAT sensor or the intake air temperature. Uh, sensor and basically what this does is it monitors the air temperature and gives that feedback to the ECU which will then change the air fuel ratio accordingly. So if it's a warmer air temperature it'll inject less fuel and if it's a cooler air temperature uh, meaning more dense more oxygen then it can inject uh, more fuel. And so here on the Skunk 2 you can see where you would mount the IAT sensor. 
And finally, one of the last things to check out is this vacuum line here in the back of the intake manifold. And if you follow this hose, you can see that this runs to the brake booster. So that provides the vacuum uh, for your brake booster for your power brakes. So that's kind of a general look at the intake manifold. Uh, as you can see, it's kind of a complex thing that looks pretty simple, uh, but it has quite a few connections and all kinds of different uh, tools and sensors that, it, that are mounted to it uh, and rely on it to function. So finally, let's talk about what makes a performance intake manifold. So basically, you just want to increase the size of the intake manifold uh, of the plenum and the runners so that you can have more air flowing through it. Um, and the other thing you want to do is remove any curves or obstacles that may exist within it so that the air can be free flowing throughout the entire uh, intake manifold. So this particular Skunk 2 uh, intake manifold features a uh, 70 millimeter opening and it has oversized runners uh, and a larger plenum uh, to allow for more airflow. Um, and also these uh, ports here are kind of matched to the cylinder head so that that kind of lines up really well. Um, and it also minimizes curves. You can see it's a fairly straight design, uh, very simplistic, uh, and that's a good thing here. So don't forget to check out redline360.com in the description. Um, and if you have any questions or comments, feel free to leave them below.